the biggest, baddest meat-eating dinosaurs of all time. Measuring somewhere between 14 to 18 feet long, the Spinosaurus aegypticus was actually bigger than the T-Rex, almost the size of three killer whales. And yes, it makes a worse villain than the ferocious T-Rex too, because this guy could swim. It was like a freaking Godzilla surfacing from shallow water bodies. Many believe it could weigh up to 31,600 pounds, which makes it almost as heavy as the Mosasaurus. The teeth were no joke either, with 64 teeth, some reaching up to 5 inches long. But even with its huge size, it was actually pretty fast. In fact, it may have been able to run at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour, which is two times faster than the average human. Now, let me take you back to 1912, when paleontologist Richard Marra stumbled upon the first Spinosaurus in Western Egypt. His buddy Ernst Stromer gave it the name we know today in 1915. This discovery was a big deal, showing off that crazy spine. But tragedy hit in 1944 during a bombing raid in Munich, Germany, wiping out the Spinosaurus specimen. Luckily, Stromer's son saved the day by donating his dad's archives in 1995. Despite the setback, scientists keep hunting for other Spinosaurus specimens throughout history. And then it finally happened a hundred years later. Paleontologist Nizra Ibrahim, working on his doctorate in Morocco, had an insane encounter. A local fossil collector handed him a box of fossils, and one particular piece caught Ibrahim's attention. It resembled Stromer's illustration of a Spinosaurus spine. Ibrahim was obviously intrigued and persuaded the collector to guide him and his team to the original fossil site. And that's when they hit the jackpot at a cliffside in the Kemkem -Kem fossil beds. They found hind limbs, a chunk of the pelvis, various neural spines, and a significant portion of the lower jaw, likely from a juvenile Spinosaurus. The team went high-tech, taking CT scans of their newfound treasures and crafting digital models based on Stromer's original descriptions. Piecing everything together, they dropped a bombshell in 2014 with a published paper detailing their discoveries. Nearly a century after Stromer's first Spinosaurus description, paleontologists got a fresh look at this iconic dinosaur. And guess what? It turned out to be even weirder than anyone had imagined. But remember, this was just a juvenile. The biggest Spinosaurus on the block is represented by a colossal humerus known as NMC41852 and it's more than 50% larger than the neotype. If we crunch the numbers using the model from Ibrahim's study and the densities provided by Leramendi, plus factoring in the size difference that the paleo artist Spino in Wonderland worked out with the neotype, we're looking at a Spinosaurus that was approximately 16.65 meters long and weighed around 14,340 kilograms. This makes it a contender for the title of the largest known theropod and the mightiest land-dwelling predatory animal, potentially giving Dinosuchus hatcheteri a run for its money. And apart from that, Spinosaurus was the only large meat-eating dinosaur with a prominent sale. The question is, why? Well, there are quite a few theories about the impressive 1.5-meter-high sale on Spinosaurus's back. Some believe it had something to do with attracting mates, like a peacock showing off its feathers. Perhaps Spinosaurus males used to flaunt their sails to impress the ladies during mating season. But there's another theory that has a rather different explanation. What if the sail was actually a built-in temperature control system, soaking up sun by day and letting out heat by night? Sounds nifty, but turns out Spinosaurus might have been more of a warm-blooded creature. So this theory doesn't really work well in that case, does it? Well, there's another idea suggesting the sail was more like a camel's hump, a fat stash for lean times. But didn't Spinosaurus live in lush, wet habitats, not deserts? Doesn't quite add up, does it? Now, here's a recent theory. Spinosaurus may have pursued a semi or almost fully marine lifestyle, swimming around in the rivers of northern Africa like a giant crocodile. If this is in fact the case, then there's a possibility that the sail of Spinosaurus was some kind of marine adaptation, possibly helping it navigate. Biologists figure the sail was probably a showstopper for courtship, but it might have had backup jobs like keeping cool, storing fat, or even helping with navigation. With Spinosaurus fossils still scarce, the mystery will continue to linger. However, Recent studies suggest that Spinosaurus, unlike most large theropods, likely moved around on all fours, making it an obligate quadruped. 
This fresh perspective, backed by a new study, shifts the center of gravity forward, suggesting a smaller pelvic girdle, and highlights hind limbs adapted more for paddling than traditional bipedal walking. Speaking of limbs, a major problem with modern Spinosaurus depictions is that they often give it ridiculously short hind legs. The anatomical info, including Wikipedia's take, indicates that when fully stretched out, the hind legs were a bit over 25% of the entire body's length. Considering the estimated 14-meter length of an adult spino, that translates to legs measuring 3.75 meters from hip to toe, and that's on par with other theropods like T. rex, Carcharodontosaurus, and Giganotosaurus. But strangely, artists keep portraying Spinosaurus with legs nearly half as short as they likely were. Not cool, you guys. Spinosaurus holds the title for the largest known carnivorous dinosaur, surpassing even Tyrannosaurus in size. Its impressive stats include a skull measuring around 1.75 meters, approximately 6 feet in length, a body stretching between 14 to 18 meters, 46 to 59 feet, and a hefty estimated weight ranging from 12,000 to 20,000 kilograms, 13 to 22 tons. But here's what really makes the Spinosaurus stand out. Its skull resembles that of a crocodile, with nostrils positioned near the eyes instead of at the end of the snout. Unlike other theropods, its teeth are straight and conical, perfect for snagging fish. Moreover, its skeleton boasted compact, dense bones, unlike similar land-dwelling theropods. This feature gave it better control underwater, leading some scientists to argue that Spinosaurus was more of an aquatic predator than a landlubber. But what has really surprised researchers is this creature's tail, with its peculiar caudal vertebrae. These vertebrae displayed exceptionally tall neural spines on top and extended chevrons underneath, indicating that Spinosaurus had even more spines than previously understood. Notably, the fossils appear to be from a single individual, a rarity in the chemchem beds, making the reconstructed tail reliable and not a composite. This discovery suggests that the paddle-like structure of the tail is indicative of an adaptation to aquatic environments. Similar to living crocodiles and newts, it is proposed that this tail was used to propel Spinosaurus through the water. Moreover, bone reduction towards the tail's tip enables increased flexibility, allowing for side-to-side -side movement. This finding adds clarity to the debate regarding Spinosaurus's aquatic abilities, strongly supporting the notion that its unique tail evolved for efficient movement in water. Now, these guys roamed the Earth from around 99 to 93.5 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. Their stomping grounds were likely in North Africa, and they likely lived in places like tidal flats. They're muddy or marshy spots that the sea covers, as well as mangrove forests. The weather was no joke either. During the hottest times of the year, there were some serious droughts, causing many lakes and rivers to dry up. This tricky situation might have nudged Spinosaurus into playing the role of a land predator every now and then. It coexisted with several other large predators like Carcharodontosaurus and Bahariosaurus, as well as smaller ones like Rugops and Deltadromius. There were also other dinosaurs around, like the Ornithopod Oranosaurus, the Titanosaur Sauropods Perilotitan, and Egyptosaurus. With all that competition around, the Spinosaurus likely had a taste for fish munching on a menu of giant coelacanths, sawfish, hefty lungfish, and even sharks that cruised in its river habitat. The design of Spinosaurus's skull kind of screams fish eater, pointing towards its likely prey choices. Now, this preference for fish is not just anatomical speculation. A 2010 study in the journal Geology, utilizing chemical analysis, supports the idea that fish were a major part of Spinosaurus's diet. But, interestingly, a tooth from another member of the Spinosauridae family, Irritated Chalangiri, was found embedded in the remains of a Cretaceous pterosaur, a flying reptile, in 2004. This discovery hints that these fish-loving Spinosaurs might have also dabbled in hunting or scavenging non-aquatic creatures. Now, this is highly probable, because we do have some pretty heavy evidence to support this claim. A Spinosaurus tooth found lodged in the vertebrae of Carcharodontosaurus, suggesting it fought and preyed on large theropods, comparable to the mighty Tyrannosaurus. Moreover, in a 2023 abstract focusing on the feeding habits of Spinosaurus, it was uncovered that Spinosaurus packed quite a punch, with a bite force exceeding 20,000 newtons, coupled with a robust skull. 
while its bite force fell within the typical range for large theropods, what set it apart was its extremely strong cranium and rostrum, showing resistance to stress during biting. Surprisingly, the stress on Spinosaurus's cranium was pretty darn similar to that experienced by Tyrannosaurus, and that really tells you how ruthless of a predator it must have been. This amazing giant went extinct about 95 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. The exact reasons for its extinction aren't entirely clear, but experts think it might have been because of changes in the environment, competition with other species, and maybe even natural disasters. Here's a likely explanation. The spino was highly adapted to swampy and water-based environments, but when these habitats dried up, even with its varied diet, it couldn't survive without its specific ecosystem. However, it is unlikely that Spinosaurus perished like other dinosaurs of its time due to a massive meteor impact. Instead, scientists suggest its extinction resulted from an extreme drought, which occurred before the mass extinction event. Evidence supporting this theory comes from the discovery of Spinosaurus bones in the Egyptian desert. Its body was well suited to wetlands, with features like its long snout, specialized for detecting fish underwater. However, in the new dry environment, these adaptations became less useful. For example, its snout wasn't as effective at detecting the scents of other dinosaurs compared to its ability to find fish. And what's more, the Spinosaurus had lighter bones than other dinosaurs, which might have posed challenges in adapting to the changing conditions. In the end, the Spinosaurus was the largest carnivorous dinosaur, standing as the top predator of its time. With straight teeth and the ability to swim, making it a remarkable aquatic and land predator, it's amazing that there's still so much left to discover about this Egyptian spine lizard. Given that a lot of its bones still remain undiscovered, who knows what other secrets might surface very soon. And that's a wrap. Do you think the Spinosaurus hunted more on land or underwater? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.